In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you three simple cards and three simple automations that you can make use of with Room Assistant. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. I've had quite a few people messaging me asking when part four of my Room Assistant tutorial is coming out. Now, this isn't part four, which is kind of confusing. But the idea of this video is to just give you some handy cards and some simple automations that are going to get you started with using Room Assistant. So I haven't forgotten, part four is coming. The reason I haven't yet done part four is just because there's one particular automation for that video that I haven't yet got working 100%. But as soon as that's working, I'll be sure to get that video recorded and uploaded for you. If there's any automations that you use or any automations you'd like to see me feature in that part four of Room Assistant, then be sure to let me know in the comments below. Submit those ideas and I'll try and include some of my favourite ones when I actually record that video. If you're watching this, I'm assuming that you're interested in Room Assistant, but if you're not and you have no idea what Room Assistant is, then check out part one of my Room Assistant tutorial. In that video, I cover what both Room Assistant and Presence Detection is. But in short, what Room Assistant is, is a way to allow us to do presence detection in our smart homes by using Bluetooth. If you want more details on how this all works or what you're gonna need for this project, be sure to check out that playlist in the description below. Okay, let's jump straight to our Home Assistant dashboard. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna be using a blank dashboard just to keep it nice and clean and anything we create, you'll be able to see exactly what we've made. To make this a little bit easier and just to help with the understanding of what's going on, I've just added a little card here and on this card there's two entities. There's my Apple Watch tracker and the presence detection for the watch so this just tells me what room it's currently in. Based on that information I can see that it's classing me as being home because the Apple Watch is in a room and then I can also see that the Apple Watch is in the dining room which is where I'm just currently sat. If you're interested in creating that card it's just a simple entity card and all that's in there is just the sensor for the room presence and the tracker for the watch. And that's just a nice visual aid to see where a specific device is. From this information then, we could create an automation for this device, in this case the Apple Watch, and the automation could be when the Apple Watch is in the dining room, do something specific. And that would work well if you wanted to run a specific automation, if that particular device was in a set room. But what if you wanted to run an automation if any track device was in a room? We currently don't have a way of telling if a particular room is occupied. So let's create a sensor now that's gonna tell us if a room is occupied or not. For this sensor, there's gonna be two bits of information we need. The first one's gonna be the device that we're tracking. So in my example here, it's gonna be my Apple Watch. And the second one is gonna be the name of the room that we wanna be able to identify whether it's occupied or not. I'm gonna be using two different rooms that I'm tracking. So mine's gonna be the dining room and kitchen. The important thing about the room name is it's case sensitive, so it needs to be the exact room name that you gave it in Room Assistant. So in this example here, I'm gonna to have to call it Dining Room and it's gonna to have to have the capital D and capital R. Let's create that now then and it will all become a bit clearer. So the first thing we need to do is open up our file editor. We can see here that I'm in the main configuration.yaml file. I personally like to separate my YAML into individual files, but if you want to, you can just add that sensor into this configuration file here. You don't have to separate your files and you don't have to put it in the binary sensor file. This is just how I like to do it. If you are copying along with this, make sure that you include this line here. And if you didn't know, that line's just gonna tell Home Assistant to include this binary sensor.yaml file when it builds the configuration. Let's find that file in the file system now then. So on the left here, we're just gonna find binary sensor and it's just there. This is gonna be all the YAML that we need and it's gonna be linked in the description below. So feel free to just copy and paste that and edit the values to match your entities. We'll quickly skim through this then. So we can see that it's a template sensor and this top line here is the name of the sensor. So this particular one is just called dining room occupied. Next up, we've just got the friendly name of that sensor. So it's just dining room occupied. And then here we've got a small line, which is the template value. Now this is just a nice simple one. And all this is saying that if the state of this Apple Watch presence is dining room, then it's gonna be on. And if it's not dining room, then it's gonna be off. So just a simple on or off based on whatever room that's in. And just below that one, we've got the same thing, except it's for the kitchen. In short then, what this sensor is gonna do is if it detects my Apple Watch in the dining room, it's gonna set that room to be true with true meaning that the room is occupied and false meaning the room is not occupied. 
If you're tracking lots of different devices around your house, you could pad this template out with those other devices, but it doesn't just need to be those presence detected devices. It could be say a motion sensor. As an example, let's just add some or conditions to this value template. We can see now we've got a couple of extra conditions and if any of these conditions are met, then the dining room occupied is gonna be true. We can see here we've got another device being tracked, which is the iPhone and it's also in the dining room. But then we've also got this motion sensor and this motion sensor has the state of on. We're now just gonna to need to head into the configuration and just reload our binary sensor and template entities. So we wanna hit configuration. Then we're just gonna scroll down and go to server controls. And again, we're gonna just scroll down to the bottom. We're then just gonna press template entities. That's gonna reload our entities. We can then just jump back to our main dashboard. And we should now be able to just add a card for those sensors that we just created. So let's have a go at doing that now. So we're just gonna edit the dashboard and add a card and we can just choose to add by entity. And I'm just gonna do a search for dining room. And we can see here we've got this dining room occupied sensor. So I'm just gonna press that and continue. And I'm just gonna say add to Lovelace UI. And I've just gone ahead and done the same thing for the kitchen there. So from this, we can now see that the dining room is occupied and the kitchen isn't. We can now use these new sensors in our automations and we can do things now based on whether or not the kitchen is occupied or not occupied and the same for any other room that we have. So we've got a card now that's gonna tell us what room a particular device is in and we've also got a card that tells us whether or not a room is occupied or not. Now let's combine the two of these and we're gonna create a card that's gonna show up only if people are in a room. To do this, we're gonna use the entity filter card and again, the code for this will be in the description below. So at the top, we're just gonna edit the dashboard and then we're gonna to choose to add a new card and we can do a search for the card and the card we want is the entity filter. And we can see that just here. If you've not used the entity filter card before, then it kind of does what the name says and it filters. So you can have items show up in a card based on a set filter. So in our case now, we're gonna have a card only show items if they're in a room. So let's paste our YAML in here. Let's have a quick look at this YAML to make sure we understand it. So we've got the entity filter as the type. The entities are gonna be the devices that we're tracking. And in this case, it's the Apple Watch. So I've got the presence detection for the Apple Watch there. This next parameter is optional. So I've got the name and it's just Mark. If you don't overwrite the name here, it's just gonna call it whatever the device's name is. So in this case, it would be Mark's Apple Watch room presence. So let's just keep the name to keep it nice and neat. Next up, we've got the state filter. And what this is doing is filtering the device based on the state. The state is dining room. So if the Apple Watch has the state of dining room, it will show up in this list. And we could add more entities to this list and any that have that matching state will show up in the list. Just at the bottom then, I've also given it a title and it's got this show empty. Show empty is currently set to false. And what this is asking us is whether or not we wanna show the card if that entity list is empty. And I'll show you an example of that now with the kitchen sensor. So here we're filtering it on kitchen and show empty is set to false. And in the preview here, we can see nothing because there's no entities with that value. If we set show empty to be true, we can see now it's shown us an empty card. Now I've got a title on mine, but if we didn't have that title, it would just be a white empty square. And you'd end up with something like that on the dashboard, which is quite ugly. So rather than just having an empty white box or a box with a title in, we set show empty to be false and that will just hide the card if there's nothing in the list. And when we're in the standard display view, we can't see that card. So that was three simple cards we can make use of on our dashboard to make use of the data we're getting from Room Assistant. If there's any cool cards that you make use of to show your Room Assistant data on your dashboard, then let me know in the comments below. We're now just gonna have a quick look at three simple automations where we're gonna make use of some of these sensors we've just created. The first automation then is the dining room presence lights. In my home assistant, I've got an input boolean called home alone. And if I was ever in the house by myself, I'd turn this on because it affects various automations I have in different ways. My example here would be, I'm using the room assistant presence detection to let home assistant know which room I'm in. And if I'm not in that room for more than a minute and the lights are on, it's gonna turn the lights off just as a power saving thing because it's just me in the house. Nice and simple then. So this one's got a simple trigger and the trigger starts if the dining room occupied sensor is set to off for more than one minute. If it is off for more than one minute, it's gonna look at the condition. 
and this condition is just looking at a state and it's checking if the home alone state is currently set to true. So if that's true, it means I'm home alone and it's gonna do these little power save automations. So if we have that turned on, it's gonna do the action and this action is just gonna call a service which is gonna turn off the lights. And in this example, it's just gonna turn off the fairy lights. So you could expand on this, you could add more conditions, you could have things like if there's motion sensors in the room, those motion sensors also need to have not detected any movement for a set period of time. You could do the reverse of this, you could have it where the lights turn on when you enter a room. However, I found that sometimes there is a little bit of a delay, so you could walk into a room and there'd be no lights on for say four seconds or so. Next up, we've got the bin reminder. Again, another simple example, this one's the bin reminder. And what this one's going to do is just send me a text to speech notification if the next day is bin day. In this trigger, we're making use of that sensor that we created. So this one's got the kitchen occupied sensor. And if this kitchen occupied sensor is set to on for five minutes, it's going to have a look at its conditions. With this condition, we're making use of the and condition type. And what this means is that both the trigger and whatever our set condition is, both have to be true in order for it to run. Our condition here is that the Akara motion sensor needs to be detecting motion. So the kitchen needs to be occupied for more than five minutes and the motion sensor needs to be detecting motion. So both of these need to be happening for this to run. We then have another condition on here, which is the time condition. Now this time condition is a fixed time condition and it's currently set to 7 p.m. Below that, we've got a day of the week selector and it's currently set to Tuesday only. So for this particular automation to all run, the kitchen needs to be occupied for more than five minutes. The Akara motion sensor needs to be detecting motion and it also needs to be after 7 p.m. and also a Tuesday. And if all of that's true, it's gonna run that action. And this action is just a simple text-to-speech notification. And this just runs using the Notify Alexa media service. If you want more information on how the Alexa text-to-speech service works, be sure to check out that recent video I did. In that video, I run through the setup and some of the basic text-to-speech options. So here, this is just gonna run that text-to-speech message and it's just gonna announce on my Echo, hey, bin reminder. I then also do a service call to just turn off this automation and this stops it from happening multiple times. This last automation is similar to the previous one where we're gonna be combining the Alexa service and the room assistant's presence. This one is my Alexa morning presence and what this one does is if it detects me in the kitchen after a set period of time and the motion sensors also detect me, it's gonna run an Amazon Echo routine. Here it's looking at my Apple Watch specifically and it's gonna be checking if that's set to kitchen. If that's true, that trigger's gonna start. It's then gonna look at any conditions. Again, we're making use of the time conditions, but in this one, we've got two times set. So for this one, it has to be after 7 a.m. but before 10 p.m. So this gives it a short window where this can be true. And this one also only works on weekdays and not weekends. That's the timing part of the condition then. The next part is the motion sensor part. And again, this one just wants motion to be detected. And if all of that's true, it's gonna fire off a pre-made Alexa routine. And this is just a routine that's created in the Alexa app. I think that particular routine just says a random good morning phrase. It then says what's in my calendar for the day and what the weather's gonna be like. So it runs that and then it just delays for 24 hours. And there we go, that's three automations that make use of our room assistant's presence data. Those three cards and the three automations were designed to just be simple examples to give you an idea of what you can do with Room Assistant. Let me know in the comments below any cool automation ideas you have using Room Assistant. As I said, when I get round to creating that part four, any of that stand out, I'll try and include in that video. Before I go, can I say a massive thank you to my singular patron, Bo? Thank you, I appreciate you. If you are interested in becoming a patron and supporting the channel, there'll be a link in the description below. There are a few benefits you get by becoming a member, so if you're interested, go and check that out. Also, a massive thank you to anyone else that's bought me a coffee through the Buy Me A Coffee service. I don't expect the donations, and they're definitely not required, but I do really appreciate them. Any and all contributions I get will be going straight back into my YouTube, and they're just going to help fund future projects and help make everything a little less janky. And while we're getting those plugs in, if you're not already, hit that subscribe button. And if you ding dong the notification bell, you'll be alerted to any future videos I do. I recently set up a Facebook group 
And the idea behind this group is to just help and support anyone with any issues or questions they've got regarding the content I've been creating. This group's open for anyone to join, so if you've got any questions or any issues with the tutorials I've put out, be sure to check that out. As always guys, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. In that video, I cover what both... I've forgotten. I do something in the video for sure.